first step you have ratification of EU rules, in the next step legal implementation into subordinary legislation and the final and most important step is behavioral change or practices. Now we're gonna put some methodological meat on this um, theoretical model. About EU rules, <laughs> we are thinking of pig and sheep slaughter, of course. Uh, yes, about EU rules, we already did some legal documents analysis in order to study the content of EU rules. And actually, this uh, content analysis, legal document analysis, was finished today, about two hours ago, and it showed very interesting. Uh, results as you will uh, hear soon. So legal documents analysis, yes, and we will use survey in these six countries to measure attitudes towards European rules regarding slaughter, home slaughter of domestic animals. The next step is, or phase, is ratification. So we will ask questions, these are research questions actually, uh, which rules were adopted and how they were adopted. And here comes the revelation of today, which were, was helped by Pierre and uh, Antoinette. Uh, GP means gold plating, right, Antoinette? Gold plating is a term which uh, tells us that elites, political elites in countries, member countries, candidate countries, actually create stricter rules than European Union would have it. And then, this is my perhaps extension, then they can blame European Union. We had to make these rules so strict because, you know, European Union forces us to. So we will try to analyze with legal document analysis, with expert interviews, uh, how these rules were transposed into uh, domestic legislation. First, we thought, well, probably domestic elites tried to transpose as little of these rules as possible. But now we see actually in our case that rules in Slovenia, Macedonia, also I think in Croatia are actually stricter in terms of home slaughter. Because European Union does not say that you cannot donate meat of animal that you slaughtered at home to your daughter living in the city. But Slovenian legislation does say that. So, uh, so to speak, everyone is guilty because everyone who slaughters pig at home or sheep will probably give some meat to daughter or, or, or son living to immediate family members <laughs> living in the city. So uh, this is gold plating and this will be one of the main goals of within our research and this has popped up now and I think it will be relevant not just for pig slaughter but also for thinking about enforcement of EU rules and its social consequences, political dimensions and so forth and so forth. We will use, I said, expert interviews. Uh, also, uh, I got a little revelation from Antonetta today. Uh, she was speaking about different levels of implementation <laughs> and you have the level of ratification, but then you also have the level of bureaucratic enforcement, so you need bureaucratic capacity. So we need experts from, I think, political arena. Uh, this would be like former uh, agricultural minister. This would be a perfect person uh, who was minister at the time of adoption. This would be one expert. Another one would be someone for, from veterinarian administration. This is bureaucracy which has to have capacity and will to implement these rules. And the third one would be inspector who is really working on the field and the question is here of course will inspector be honest with us when we ask him well, uh, do you really regulate or do you really uh, try to find these practices because uh, I think uh, there are strong reasons uh, to suppose that they are not really looking for practices of donating meat to rel relatives or even perhaps selling meat because selling meat according to my small research is very much present in Slovenia and I would say in other countries too. 
selling meat which from home slaughtered animals, of course. And we will also use media content analysis because at least in Croatia there was a lot of public debate and this public debate entered media so we can get some interesting stuff also from media reporters. Legal Im uh, implementation is the next phase. So how was this general ratification transposed into subordinate legislation? Are there any legal collisions? This is important questions because sometimes there are legal collisions, perhaps in this our slaughter case there will not be, but we will check through legal documents analysis also uh, for this and through expert interviews and what is the bureaucratic capacity to, and also bureaucratic will, the will of bureaucracy. So this is the, this part of enforcement belt. Uh, interpretation, sanctions, implementation. Uh, we are moving here into enforcement belt, actually. And finally, behavioral uh, change. This is about practices, and this is the most important part of our research. We will compare practices before and after, so what is the behavioral change, and we will do it mostly through interviews with farmers, Probably we will choose seven farmers who practice home slaughter a lot and seven uh, customers, regular customers of these farmers in order to ask them, of course, also about cultural embeddedness, how important it is, it is tradition as we heard in these places. So practices and everything related to theoretical model that uh, Pedro has presented throughout the model, all uh, terms will be part of our main method here, which are interviews with farmers and customers. And also we will use survey. I will present to you questions for survey, which we su suggest to enter survey, so how common these practices are in these environments. And we will also use expert interviews. And secondary data analysis, there are data which are interesting, for instance, in Slovenia, I just needed a few clicks to find out that pig slaughter is going rapidly down and sheep slaughter is going rapidly up. Home, I'm speaking of home slaughter. This is something interesting, something to be interpreted, so secondary analysis also is important uh, method in this model. So this is the most important thing that I had to tell, but I think I have, let's say, five minutes more. Uh, to, to, to add some other things. Uh, this slide is just to tell you that Europeanization model, using Europeanization model does not mean that we are not taking into account our basic theoretical model. It fits perfectly well and all these terms will be covered, as I said, but I don't have time now to go term by term. Uh, and explain how this will be covered. And all these gaps will be taken into consideration. About the first method, just uh, to say that, yes, we have studied European regulations, and we found out that there are four major specific rules regarding home slaughter that might be interesting to study. And the most important one is this one. Meat from home slaughtered animals can only be consumed within the owner's household. It is not allowed to be sold or given as a gift. But here is a little mistake because now we found actually that European Union does allow countries to allow giving away this meat as a gift. But in Slovenian legislation it is explicitly forbidden. And the question is why? Uh, so, and we have this kind of regulation in Bosnia with religious exception, in Croatia, in Macedonia, and in Slovenia. So it will be interesting uh, to see why political elites did this, why did they uh, introduce stricter legislation. And there are other uh, animals need to be properly stunned before slaughter and so on. There are three other uh, regulations that we will study, that we will focus on. So this is about legal document analysis. We don't have much time, uh, so I want to present to you all the methods that I have presented until now. 
just a few words about survey. These are survey questions that we have already suggested and are already adopted. They are part of the questionnaire and they regard EU rules and attitudes towards the EU. We suggest one more general question, that is how would you vote if tomorrow was a referendum for entry into European Union? This is very simple, very short question, but I think it is really very useful, so uh, we suggest that it is included in the questionnaire. And we suggest specific questions regarding home slaughter of animals. Uh, the idea is that we say, on the basis of EU standards, our country has introduced rules that forbid selling or donating meat of animals slaughtered at home. So you see that even we scholars here are accusing a little bit uh, European Union, if you don't read really precisely. I said, I even th thought about uh, writing here, inspired by EU standards. So I wrote, on the basis of EU standards, it is forbidden in your country to uh, even donate meat of animals uh, uh, slaughtered at home. So do you agree these rules are good for our country? These rules, uh, rules are being strictly respected. This is deviation. This is partial enforcement. So this uh, statement is crucial. Uh, I think these rules harm our tradition and good practices. This uh, goes directly to what Rana was talking about, the traditional embeddedness of these uh, practices. Uh, and the EU should not interfere with issues like home slaughter. I think this also grasps an important uh, element of attitudes towards EU. I can imagine a group, say, a group of people saying, I am for the entry of EU, but leave our traditions alone. So as long as our traditions are not uh, interfered with. But it will be really interesting to see how much EU really wants to interfere with traditions and how different populistic maneuvers are, uh, are used by political actors. Uh, and then we have two statements on practices. You know there are a lot of statements of, on practices. This is general introduction. And we would just add to receive meat of home slaughtered animals from relatives of, or friends, so this is donating, giving as a gift, or to buy meat of home slaughtered animals from small farmers. This is all I have to say about survey, so these are the questions that we are suggesting, these are the questions that are already in the questionnaire. I have in my presentation also other methods, but uh, I really don't think <coughs> it's uh, fruitful to go through all this. I just want to end up with this slide. You all know, or perhaps know, what this is, no, Jeff? <laughs> These are cevapcici. Uh, and cevapcici is something like fish and chips in, in England, right? Right in the Balkans. It's very important, very culturally embedded, and so forth. And here, this is a title from well-read newspaper. European Union does not allow making Balkan cevapi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So you see that there are, I think, populist maneuvers by different actors who try to present it's the EU forcing me to uh, do this to you, to forbid Chevapi. Uh, they, they are supposed to have insight, I don't know, something not good for our health, but I didn't go deeper into it. This is just uh, an illustration of what is going on especially in Croatia, in Slovenia not, or what's going on in, in Croatia, uh, uh, regarding uh, the home slaughter of pigs. EU is forbidding kolinje. Kolinje is this family, big family feast where you slaughter a pig and it's ritualistic and it's traditional, almost primordial. Uh, I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, so we have this clash between these traditional ways of life cultural clash, I say, and Europeanization, which can be seen here as a hegemon trying to civilize Balkan peoples and so on. Uh, I think this is relevance <coughs> for policymakers. So to show them that there is big symbolic meaning in this uh, issue and to show them that perhaps local elites are using this in the end against 
the European Union by making rules even stricter than European Union suggests. Uh, and finally, this is hypothesis from Antoinetta's um, uh, article on empty shells. Uh, and it's the end of the article. It says that when local prayers, she says, veto players, but this is what I changed. When local players, uh, players' preferences are configured in such a way that the new rules are preferable to the status quo, the old and new rules would align and there would be institutionalization. And by institutionalization, she means actually that rules are not empty shells, but that they transfer into practices, or perhaps we would say that they become constraints. So when will the rules really work? When you work with local people and take their considerations or their ideas into consideration. That is the main, probably the main result, will be probably the main result, I guess, from our research. But we will also identify different gaps and we will uh, find ways or suggest ways of bridging, closing these gaps. So yes, this would be all on, from me. And now, I guess, we have some time for discussion. Thank you. Thank you.